Well, Lee Steinberg has spent more than 40 years as one of the most influential sports agents in history. In the past few years, he's opened an agent academy to teach the next generation about ethics. This week, he stopped by the studio after speaking to St. John's University, and we pick up our conversation talking about the player's responsibility to society. Athletes do have, as role models, they have a sense of responsibility to send a message out into the world. How do you balance, you know, taking a political stance versus the negativity that could come on the backside of it? Well, I think that uh, athletes are citizens, and part of the problem in their adjustment process as you prepare them for second career is self-absorption, the, the concept that they're somehow removed. So I like the fact they take stances on social issues. And, and you saw that a number of athletes uh, took the position that whether it's rogue police that are uh, uh, having uh, issues with citizens or whether it's people attacking police, that both things are equally wrong. And you saw a series of people speak at the ESPYs. You saw even Michael Jordan uh, give money. You saw Carmelo Anthony go ahead and uh, speak at a convocation. And I think that's a good way to develop a concept of where you're going in second career and and how you can uh, treat yourself as someone who's got other skills and athletic ones I want to ask you about social media because this is something that obviously wasn't around when you started back when you had Steve Barkowski back in 1975 as your first client social media has certainly changed the ability for individuals to connect with athletes it's also changed what an athlete is saying more or less how difficult how ch how much of a challenge is the responsibility of being able to control social media with your players the opportunity is at branding the ability to recognize someone's name as opposed to anybody else and to have a positive uh, aspect of it comes from Twitter and Instagram and all the ways in which someone can use it so if they do it well it's a real positive if they are controversial or inappropriate it becomes a real difficult situation so we have to sit with players and and talk through with them the fact that every thought that comes into their head uh, doesn't need to be expressed <laughs> that that every way they express themselves with their closest friend isn't the way they need to tweet and so it needs to be judiciously and cautiously approached I think a lot of us like to watch the TV show ballers because of the the fun that we see of what these athletes lives are like outside of the arena if you will what's the craziest thing that an athlete has asked of you or maybe it was a potential client that you didn't honor well a mother once asked me not to sign the contract until she got the actual phone that the athlete was drafted on in New York on draft day, the one that got picked up. Other ones want a, a certain numeral on the field. Uh, one athlete uh, got very angry at me because I told him the deal was done. He was sitting at a training camp and I said, no, this is what we asked for. And he said, I told you not to sign me till three weeks of training camp had passed. Oh my I hate training camp. Oh my goodness. Well. I mean, these rookies now are better trained than ever before because they are signing early, because they're slotted into these positions because of the CBA. You recently actually penned an article about the changes to the collective bargaining agreement in 2011. Um, and you noted that the first year of the CBA, 17 players had their contracts fully guaranteed, which is really an anomaly in the NFL, as opposed, uh, as opposed to other sports where Major League Baseball players get all of their contracts guaranteed. An NFL player could be injured in the first year and the rest of the contract could be null and void. This year, it jumped up to 20. Is a guaranteed contract really the only way that athletes can, the NFL players, can make sure that they're going to get paid for the work they do? So the difference between between the NFL and the other sports is that in baseball and basketball and hockey, the contracts, the yearly salaries in a five-year package have always been guaranteed for skill, meaning if they get cut, they still get the money, and for injury, meaning if they suffer a career any injury, they get the money. That never happened in football until the last five years. In football, there's bonusing. So the first player in the draft this year uh, got an $18 million signing bonus. 
but the salaries were never guaranteed. This year, the first 20 players got four full years of guarantees as rookies, and then it kept going. So our client, Paxton Lynch, got three full years and then a third of the fourth year and it kept going after that so in the second round the first and second years got guaranteed so this is a big breakthrough for players it goes against uh, 80 years of football tradition and uh, it will probably continue to expand the CBA, I think it's well known that the collective bargaining agreement was fantastic for the NFL owners, it was great for the NFL, and terrible for the players. Does it come a point where they recognize this and they might strike before the CBA is up in 2021? Well, I don't think so. It will come up again in about five years. It's a 10-year deal. Uh, prior to 2011, the players were getting 55% of the gross and the owners 45%. Now, when the negotiation finished in 2011 magically the owners were getting 53 percent and the players were getting 47 percent when the owners negotiate as a collective they're billionaires they stand together really strongly and the players have a difficult time achieving some of their goals what they wanted was to redistribute money to proven productive starters and they got that and they also got some benefits and benefit packages that were pretty good but by and large, they've had more trouble than uh, baseball players and basketball players have in achieving their goals. And a lot of that is due to Roger Goodell is really good at his job. His job is to protect the owners, to get good contracts for the NFL. His job isn't necessarily to protect the players. Sometimes it's against the players. And as we've seen in the past year, sometimes he will overstep his boundaries and he will create new procedures to try to come up with new disciplinary actions. It's very difficult for people in New York to say that they would side with Tom Brady, but in Tom Brady versus Roger Goodell, it almost seems like New Yorkers would, would side with Brady. Has Roger Goodell overreached his power a little bit? The players collectively bargained in a way that gave Roger Goodell complete power in disciplinary matters. So they, the players gave it to him. I think in the next collective bargaining agreement, they'll try to pair some of that power back. So they didn't know what they were giving him is what I you're saying. I don't think they realized how uh, strong and overreaching he was going to be. But look, whenever issues come up with Roger Goodell, people say, well, he's lost the owners. If you were an owner, you have a commissioner who has blown out the television revenue, blown out stadium revenue, increased uh, teams like Dallas. Dallas comes into the league in 1989 and they're worth $140 million. They are now worth $4 billion. He negotiated a collective bargaining agreement that caps the revenue and gives owners a larger share. Um, in every way, he He's enhanced owner profitability, the wealth of their franchises. 45 million people play fantasy football. Sure. The NFL now dominates popular culture. There are weeks where five of the top 10 top ranked Nielsen nighttime television shows are NFL nighttime football. That's never happened. The NFL is not only the most popular sport by two to one, it's the most popular televised entertainment. So if you're an owner looking at Roger Goodell, job well done. Yeah, he's not going anywhere, at least by the owners, but you wonder whether or not the players are going to try to do as much as they can to try to at least ratchet back his control. I expect they will. Our thanks to Lee Steinberg for coming in this week. Stick around. We'll be right back.